so I wanted to address this um, because I didn't want to leave it hanky, so to speak. Recently, you had the richest man on the planet. Maybe not now, but high up there. And he recently tweeted out that his pronouns are prosecute Fauci. Neither of which words in the English language constitute pronouns. I know he said in the past that he dislikes pronouns anyway. But apparently to harass one of the leading epidemiologists on the planet, he's willing to placate to conservative stupidity. Let's talk about this prosecution of Dr. Anthony Fauci for Lord knows what I don't know. What, the response to COVID? Okay, let's roll with that. If you're going to prosecute Dr. Anthony Fauci, you're going to have to prosecute pretty much every public health expert in the country. And then you're going to have to move swiftly to prosecute public health experts globally too. Because it wasn't like Dr. Anthony Fauci, as much as conservatives want a boogeyman, it wasn't like he was out there being a lone wolf saying something that other public health experts and scientists weren't saying. It was globally the accepted practice to recommend social distancing, wearing a mask, and staying home. So I don't know where all of this animus comes from towards Dr. Anthony Fauci. Now, people will critique anything, no matter how effective it is, they'll critique it. All the data modeling, as you can recall at the very onset of COVID, was predicting that if these public health measures slash restrictions were not implemented. Millions upon millions of Americans and people globally would have succumbed to the virus. So when you're looking at data modeling and you're a scientist, you can either accept what the data modeling is displaying and showing you or you can do what conservatives love to do, which is reject science wholesale and say you know more than science. Now, if Dr. Fauci had done this, he would have been criticized. Oh yes, if public health experts had not told the citizenry to socially distance, wear a mask, and as best as possible, stay home. And a lot of people contracted the virus. We're talking prior to the vaccine. We'll get there in a moment. If they hadn't given any public health advice, and a lot of people had succumbed to the virus, you know what people would have been saying? Why didn't the public health experts tell us that this was a public health emergency? So in this case, like many others, when people who are experts and responsible for the welfare and well-being of a lot of people give advice, and the advice doesn't have perfect outcomes, regardless,
regardless of what it is. You're sort of kind of damned if you do and damned if you don't. So you always err on the side of saving more lives. Which is what the public health experts did. And their recommendations, according to all independent experts and the data, save millions of lives. A lot of the people yapping and barking today wouldn't be yapping and barking today had there not been restrictions in place. Had we been frolicking to and fro like it was 1999 during coronavirus pandemic, I guarantee you a lot of people would be out of here. We lost over a million citizens at this point. It would have been a hell of a lot more. Now let's go to the vaccine. We know that any type of medication and a vaccine is a medication. I want to make that clear. We know that any type of medication has side effects, right? no matter how natural or unnatural the medication is. THC is plant-based. Marijuana, a lot of people like it. It has side effects depending on the strain, depending on the amount you use, depending on your body chemistry. Vitamins, supplements, if you take so many supplements, it could do damage to your body. So we know whatever the medication. Remember when they had a Tylenol slash bear scare in this country in the 80s? A lot of people were dying taking bear Tylenol. So much so that they had to change the name from bear to Tylenol and rebrand. Melatonin poisoning is up in child usage all across America. Children are being poisoned by melatonin. It's not really a harmful medication. It's a sleeping tablet. But if you use too much at a high dosage, it can have adverse effects on your body. So we get into the vaccine now. The vaccine is not a cure. I know a lot of people talk as though a vaccine, especially the COVID vaccine, are cures. And they're not. What it is, is something to prevent extreme effects of COVID, potentially, not always. And a lot of vaccines that we have are very short-term vaccinations, meaning you get it, it works effectively for maybe a couple of months to a year, and then you have waning immunity. It doesn't last very long. So we don't really have a way to perfect long-term vaccinations. Now, should the scientific community have told the citizenry and the society this? Possibly. This could have been useful information to know. But to blame it, one doctor, one epidemiologist, for not disclosing that information when the primary responsibility was to even ensure that people who were really vulnerable received some type of protection, it's kind of nitpicking, if you ask me. Which one is going to be a higher priority? To come out and tell people, hey, the vaccines don't last long. 
but take them anyway because they want to protect you. Or to tell people, please go and get vaccinated because this is a protection that you're going to have. The primary responsibility is to tell people this is a type of protection. And that's what the medical community chose to do. Rather than focus on how often you would need to get vaccinated, how long the vaccinations last, what the side effects of the vaccination would be on some people. All of those things are reasonable for people to say, hey, this is information I would have liked to have known. It's reasonable to say that. But when you have a general society who knows they need a medication in order to remain living, and so many people not wanting to do it just because they want to be contrary and stubborn. And then telling other people on the internet, medical advice does not sound for them. You had a lot of things going on. And I know about the mass thing too. A lot of people will say at first, the scientific community said you didn't need to wear a mask. And then they changed it. Well, here's the thing with science, because a lot of people don't know this. Science evolves. As you gather more information, you do more studies, research, you start to evolve what you knew prior. So one day you can say the data modeling is showing this if we do this. Another day, once more data comes in and is compiled and collected, you can start to say, now the data is showing that if we do this, this outcome will occur. And that's exactly to a T what was occurring. Look. Dr. Anthony Fauci, nor any doctor on the planet Earth, had all the information about COVID at the onset. And most still don't to this day. Remember, please try to remember this. COVID-19, COV, SARS-2, is a novel virus. Do we know what the word novel is? Something new, unique. Something not seen before. So if you have a brand new virus, what's the likelihood that your information at the onset is going to be good or sufficient or completely accurate? when something is novel to begin with. Can we please try to use a little brain power here? A little rational common sense? For those who claim that they don't need to be vaccinated, that might be true for some people. I don't necessarily recommend going that route, but to each their own. What I didn't like is folks who hopped on the internet, shared outlandish conspiracy theories about the vaccine, instructed other people who the vaccine would have been beneficial to, and strongly encourage them not to be vaccinated because they claim they didn't need to be vaccinated. Here's where it became problematic. You might not need to be vaccinated. But you know there's a lot of people in the general society that do. They had pre-existing conditions. And to say that one size fits all, 
because you have an animus towards medication or vaccinations. It was completely preposterous. And the folks who did this, I'm not going to name names, the folks who did that know they were totally out of pocket. Now they'll say, well, the scientists and professionals were saying that everyone needs to be vaccinated, and that's not true either. In large part, the vast majority of the society did need to be vaccinated, more so than the people who didn't. That's a fact. That's a fact. When you have an elderly population, as many Western societies do, those people definitely needed to be vaccinated. And the reason a lot of them are still around is because they received a vaccination. This a lot of the critics of the vaccine don't want to admit. They'll share outlandish conspiracy theories about people suddenly dying and try to link that to the vaccine without any medical proof. But they won't share all the millions upon millions of people who would not be here had it not been for the vaccine. They'll share stories about young people, men in general, who have contracted myocarditis and say that it's linked to the vaccine. But they won't share all the millions of people around the world who have died because they didn't receive a vaccine. So, going back to what I said earlier, you're sort of kind of damned if you do and damned if you don't. So, as an epidemiologist, looking at data, you have to do what you think is best according to the data. But data changes. It does. Should everyone who received a vaccine have taken it? Probably not. Should a lot of people who didn't receive a vaccine and succumb to the virus, should they have taken the vaccine? Probably. So, in this sense, it's really, really hard to critique any individual when it comes to coronavirus. But I think this is a primal human tendency. No matter what the outcome is to want to play Monday morning quarterback, find fault, point fingers, need someone or a group of people to blame. And I think a lot of people on the conservative spectrum want to blame Dr. Anthony Fauci for things that really there is no blame for. I think, and it's my opinion, Dr. Anthony Fauci saved millions of American lives. Hands down, period. And whether you agree with the medical advice or disagree, we can all agree that if millions of people were not vaccinated, did not socially distance, did not wear masks and pretended as though there wasn't a virus, there'd be a lot more than one million Americans that succumbed to the virus. Whether people want to say that or not, it's a damn fact. It's true. So what I would do prior to this extreme Republican Congressional House majority taking control of the House. I would grant Dr. Fauci the Presidential Medal of Freedom Award 
and I would give him a congressional award. Look, a lot of this, sadly, is politics. Why some people have chosen to politicize a virus, I will never know. Because I don't think the virus says, I'm going to attack Republicans. I'm going to attack Democrats. I'm going to attack Libertarians. I'm going to attack Socialists. I'm going to attack Communists. I'm going to attack Capitalists. The virus doesn't discriminate on the basis of your political affiliation. It just wants a host. It doesn't give a damn what your philosophy is. So, we need to take a step back. And when we hear incendiary rhetoric, like that of prosecuting leading epidemiologists, we ought to ask ourselves a couple of questions. One, what would the critics have done differently? Elon Musk is a fairly smart individual, one can argue. Tesla, his vehicle, the autopilot runs into inanimate objects, doesn't it? You put the thing on autopilot and it'll run into a fire truck, a fire hydrant a school building. It's not perfect, is it? There's still some kinks that need to be worked out with that autopilot in Tesla. Neuralink. You know, the chip that they want to put in your brain to make you a half cyborg. Apparently, the research has been atrocious when it's been conducted in chimpanzees. So, when you're dealing with complicated things, you're going to have adverse effects, is my point, regardless of what it is. And for one person to sit there and criticize another person as though all of their inventions are managed perfectly and have no flaws really is ludicrous and laughable, to say the least. Elon Musk is not a medical expert. He doesn't know a damn thing about epidemiology. So I'm not going to listen to someone who's out of their league give advice about something that he doesn't know what he's talking about. We really have to analyze this from time to time. When people want to stray into another lane, that they really don't know anything about. Are professional health experts always correct in their initial publications to the general society? No. That's why you have peer review, data collection, compiling data, analyzing it. All of that takes time. And science is one of those things that evolves and needs to be updated. Just like your phone gets updated, 
Science gets updated constantly. We're constantly learning new things about coronavirus. It's constantly updated, adapted, mutated. So our science has to do the same thing. In a lot of cases, because we don't know the original origin, it's hard to gain a grasp as to what truly would be the most effective thing. But the tools we do have available, the public health experts have advised us to utilize. I think that's kind of smart, especially when you're dealing with a living organism, which is what a virus is. It's living, and it wants to continue to live. And I say this oftentimes, as long as we have so many irresponsible people in our society, and we do, then this virus is going to continue to mutate and live. Look, folks can go outside and pretend it's 1999 all they want. You can pretend that the sun doesn't exist, the world is flat, and that you can do whatever you want in the era of COVID. A lot of folks thought they could do that. And they paid the ultimate price. They transitioned to the other side. How many conservative radio hosts who told their listeners, don't get vaccinated, it's a hoax, COVID doesn't exist, the government is trying to control us. How many of those people succumbed to the virus? I was doing stories and I have some videos. Mr. Anti-Vax out in Florida. He made a whole name for himself on the radio saying don't get vaccinated. Contracted the virus. Unvaccinated. And he succumbed to the virus. This is a fact. Millions of people have lost loved ones as a result of the virus. And then they'll say, well, people have lost loved ones as a result of being vaccinated. This might be true, although there's no way you can correlate that specifically. But let's assume people have lost their life as a result of the vaccine. Had there not been a vaccine and millions of people were still dying of COVID, the same people who are complaining about the vaccine in large part, not all, but the same people, some of them, most of them, would be saying, why isn't there a vaccine? They're trying to depopulate us. They want us to die of this thing. Again, it goes back to being damned if you do and damned if you don't. We have to be able to see the forest for the trees here. And we have to be able to recognize and realize that when you're in a position of giving public health advice, that it's not going to be advice that everyone is going to agree with in the general public. But that doesn't mean that it's not beneficial for the vast majority of the general public. Socially distancing, wearing a mask, and being vaccinated was highly beneficial for the vast majority of people on this planet. Full stop, period. And because it has some adverse effects, 
People will nitpick and cherry pick and go, aha, I told you. See this? You read this story? You see this? But those same people would be criticizing every public health expert if there weren't medication for COVID-19. If there weren't mitigation strategies for COVID-19, they would be criticizing as well. Dr. Anthony Fauci is an American and global hero. Never get it twisted. And don't listen to people who simply go out of their way to placate fringe elements of the society. That's dangerous. It's irresponsible. And above all else is pure, plain ignorance. I found Elon Musk's comments to be completely ignorant and void of any wisdom. It's purely placating to fringe elements of the society. It contradicts science. It contradicts the outcomes that actually occur in our society. And it's not responsible at the end of the day. The responsible thing would be to say, look, nobody had all the answers. Nobody did a perfect job. We had very horrible governmental leadership at the time. A leader who didn't want to take it serious lied repeatedly to the citizenry. Failed to do what was necessary. Used it for political purposes. And then you had public health experts who had to come out and try to clean up that mess and do their job effectively for a novel virus. Anyone can critique. When I ask the critics, what specifically would you have done differently to have saved millions of Americans and people globally their lives? When they can give me a sufficient and adequate answer to that, then we can start seeing and analyzing if Dr. Anthony Fauci did something horrible, made tremendous mistakes. But until they can give an alternative that's based in science, that would have saved millions of lives had it been implemented. Then you know what I'm going to tell them to do and what you ought to tell them to do? S-T-F-U. You all know what that stands for? Shut the fuck up. A lot of youth use that nowadays on social media. S-T-F-U. Yeah, that's what I would tell folks who want to criticize but not offer alternatives as to what they would have done differently. S-T-F-U.